I hope the experience is that this, because this movie is so beloved, that this is the Beauty and the Beast that we know. And oh my God, I always wondered about that or that or that. Answering questions that you may not have even realized you had, you know, about Belle and about the Beast specifically and about how they got to be who they are and where they are, you know. So it was really, it was a fun puzzle, you know, because you didn't, it wasn't a question. There have been some recent movies that have been real, you know, kind of top to bottom reinventions of the myths, you know, and, um, or seeing it from a, you know, another character's point of view or something like that, you know. This was not that. This was, you know, again, this was sort of taking the story that we all know and love and truly filling in blanks. The Beast, that was a very, very complicated and challenging process because, you know, we, we know these CG, you know, creatures have, it's been remarkable what's happened over the years. You know, you start with Gollum and then you get to those incredible characters in Planet of the Apes. However, this was yet, a, a, you know, a, a sort of a next step that needed to be reached because he is the lead of the movie, he's the emotional, he's the romantic lead of the movie, he's the emotional center of the movie, and he has to sing a song, you know? So that was something where you really just had to make sure that this was gonna be something that was, that didn't give you that, ever that feeling that it wasn't something that was, he wasn't somebody who was real, you know? It takes a very specific actor, a well-trained actor, uh, an actor who's game to to try something new, but more than that, just I can't I cannot say enough about Dan's um, brilliance in doing this. Yeah, Josh Gad and Luke Evans had great chemistry together. You know, I think there's 20 minutes of stuff on the on the cutting room floor that is was really good. You know, it was it was always such a hard because Josh is also very he's got a really contemporary like you know. Um, sense of humor, you know, which is great. You know, some of those kind of things that we know so well from Pixar movies, those kind of comments on the movie as it's happening. And so I shot a lot of that stuff and ultimately didn't use too much of it. You know, it was interesting because it felt as though, again, Beauty and the Beast sort of exists in its own sort of special world where you can't puncture it too much, you know. But um, uh, no, they were, they were a great team. I'd love to see a movie of just the two of them. Angela Lansbury in that part is iconic, you know, and, um, you know, I, recently she just sang that song again and made everybody cry, you know. She's, she owns that part, you know. Um, and, of course, you know, there are some people who say, why don't, why didn't you just cast her, you know. She's still great, she's still around, she's doing it on stage every night, you know. And the, o the only reason not to, honestly, was that because it's, again, a realistic photo reel, you know, um, telling of this, that at the end she has a son who is a boy, a young boy, and that just was stretching a little bit. But um, it did feel as though, um, who in our world has that same kind of um, warmth and connection to an audience and history with an audience? And it felt like Emma Thompson is that person. With Cogsworth, it, I've, done a few movies with Ian McKellen. I just, you know, we have a very special connection. And um, A, I knew he'd always wanted to do a musical. He'd come close a few times. Um, B, I knew how funny he is. And I think his favorite performer is Jackie Gleason, which is not what anybody would expect, you know? Um, so, so, and specifically this kind of, not pantomime, but this kind of broader musical comedy style. It's something he hasn't worked in so much in film. I mean, he's done things on stage, you know, um, like that. Um, and um, also it just felt as if, again, a slight change in character, making him the, the kind of major domo, the, the man who runs the place, you know, um, but a tin horn general, you know. Um, uh, would give a kind of contemporary twist to all of the jokes and, and that characterization. So, um, again, so thrilled when he agreed to do it. 
And Hugh McGregor, you know what it is? Again, a slightly different Lumiere. Um, you know, I think as invented and brilliantly, you know, it was, you know, he was more Chevalier. You know, he was the great French um, Boulevardier, you know, uh, performer. Um, uh, and Ewan, again, gives a slight, slightly younger twist to that. It, it's, um, it, you know, there is a bit of that Moulin Rouge um, kind of joy that he brings to this. Um, and I, that's kind of why I thought of him. I think there's something so infectious, again, that great pleasure in performing that he has. And, and he, he has what we know is the most um, well-known number in this score, Be Our Guest. And it really was, who can put that over? Who can really, really sell that, you know, in a way, as you say, Jerry Orbach, who was a, you know, just such a great Broadway showman, who in our movie culture could do that now. One of the challenges was, the, was that so many scenes take place between actors like Emma Watson, who are playing Belle, and other actors like Ian McKellen, who are playing Cogsworth, who are actually aren't there on the day that you shoot the movie, you know? Um, and I do think that there's a sense when you watch a movie of a real connection between them. Part of that was that we rehearsed all together so that they, they got to play off of each other before we actually shot it. And Emma had already played off of the real actor, you know? Then we record it and we play those recordings um, on the set. We do previs so that I can show to the actors exactly what that character is going to look like in the shot that we're shooting. And then when we're there, we either have little puppets that represent the actors as uh, the house of staff as they move, sometimes little objects with lights on them, you know. So there are a whole, a whole array of things that serve to accomplish the same goal, which is make it feel as real as possible, you know. I have to say, just start with the fact that Alan is so generous, you know. I mean, my God, I, I was filled with so many ideas and um, things I wanted to play with. And, and he, for him, it's all new and exciting, you know. And he's, he's so alive with, you know, um, uh, possibilities and melodies, my God, you know. Um, he just dove right in and... Um, not only writing these three new songs, but also rethinking some of the old ones and then writing this, I think it's 80 minute score, you know, spectacular, huge contemporary movie score, you know, um, with a lot of new music there. Um, it, was, it was thrilling and inspiring to work with him and to see just how alive this is for him. I, I just can't tell you how thrilling and inspiring it was to work with Alan Menken.